Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 292. Men, testosterone replacement can keep you alive. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Two years ago, Dr. Maupin and I wrote and had published a book called The Secret Female Hormone, identifying the concept of TDS, testosterone deficiency syndrome and identifying the symptoms that, uh, I, that let you know that you have it, that you suffer from it, and, and what can be done about it. And what we recommended at the time was somewhat controversial. American medical systems had not yet embraced this concept, especially for women, testosterone for women. We're now working on a new book, uh, Testosterone Issues for Men. It's not the title. It's a working title. Uh, And what we're finding is that in those two years, the medical world has moved towards embracing the concepts that we had been talking about, which we're all on the same path. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily the leaders, but but we're in the forefront when we talk about the issues of testosterone deficiency syndrome. And so we've been doing research for the book on men, and we've been finding medical research primarily in Europe. Um, American systems are still cautiously waiting for absolute confirmation. And so we want to talk today about the research that we've found that adamantly says that if you replace your testosterone as you age, that your body naturally decreases the amount that you have. And if you replace that loss, that you can increase your longevity, that you mm-hmm. can increase your ability to live disease-free or with diminished impacts of certain diseases of aging, uh, dramatically and, and the, the data shows it over and over again so that's what we want to talk about today is that we recently read in this month uh swiss swiss medical journal issued a compendium of surveys that they had done the research on and talk about what the data is beginning to show and the significant finding that they reported is that low testosterone the lower your testosterone is the greater your likelihood that you'll develop heart attack strokes type 2 diabetes and other significant and Obesity potentially mortal and issues of, of uh, aging that lead, lead to death. And that if you increase or uh, that low testosterone to normal range levels, you dramatically improve your statistical chances of survival. So, I mean, in a nutshell, that's the message we want everybody to hear. It is, uh, there are details. You know, we're not talking about mass consumption, street market, walk in, get some testosterone and go away. Uh, we're talking about needing it. We're talking about measuring the amount of loss. We're talking about getting a proper diagnosis, a proper dosage, uh, proper uh, investigation of the issue of enlarged or, or diminished prostates. I mean, there, there are conditions that have to be met. But if it's right for you, it's right for you on so many levels that right now are not being talked about in America. It's a, It's... It's offensive to me that we don't talk about this. And it's offensive to me that the Swiss study, I mean, European study, that collected all the research, I mean, there's more pages of references right. than there that are of the, the article yeah. that, that brought in all the information together and looked at big studies and looked at prospective studies, retrospective studies, all types of studies. And they found that testosterone saves your life. Mm-hmm. If you're a male... And we know that there are similar articles for females. Testosterone saves your life by saving you the diseases that take our lives. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is a huge killer of uh, both men and women in the United States. And so is heart disease. Those are the two biggest killers. And this compendium of research proves that replacing testosterone, which is what we do, Mm -hmm. is the key to living without these diseases or pulling you back from the edge of, um, if you're on the way to diabetes, bringing you back from diabetes. So 
That's amazing. Mm. It also says now what we call testosterone deficiency syndrome in this article and what we define it as is not just your testosterone's low. Because if I see someone who has brought me their symptoms and their lab work and they have a low testosterone, they don't have any symptoms, they don't need to be treated. I mean, seriously, they don't have any diseases like diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, or no symptoms of low testosterone, which is low libido, uh, erectile dysfunction, fatigue, loss of muscle mass, loss of, of like being able to hold yourself upright, uh, being able to think, being able to have the joy of life. De anti uh, depression, uh, anxiety, all of those things go along with low testosterone. If somebody has those and has a low testosterone or one of the diseases that goes along with low testosterone, then I treat them. If they have nothing, they don't need to be treated. And I'll say yet. Well, and there was a supportive article that was just published in the Science Digest daily this week mm -hmm. that says what you've been saying to me privately for years and what we said in our book, The Secret Female Hormone, mm -hmm. the critical that we need to change our definition of terms. The critical number that we need to measure about low testosterone is low free, not low total. Right. That 98% of the testosterone that circulates through your, your veins is bound to a protein. 2% is unbound, and it's the 2% that's unbound that can be active at the cellular level for doing the different jobs that testosterone is supposed to do to keep you strong and healthy and fight off these diseases. The total doesn't mean a bit. The total, the total doesn't, doesn't mean, mean anything. anything but, but doctors, that's what historically, they, go. They, they look at the, the definition that's been used in the past for testosterone deficiency, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, my God, it's total numbers, and mm -hmm. your numbers are fine. Well, so, and there's two mistakes. Yeah. They look at just the total. Right. And then they look at what the lab says is normal. And usually that's for your age. So the lab decreases the normal for your age. Yeah, which all means our 80 year old cohorts have, you know, like a lower nothing. range than our 40 year old cohorts. Right. Yeah. So, so they don't compare you to young, healthy levels of testosterone. Mm -hmm. They compare men to this decreased with age level which everybody doesn't feel good at, at 80 so or 60. I mean, most men have low levels at 80 or 60. Anywhere in there after 55, they normally have that. So that's just comparing you to sick people, basically. That's like saying that when we do bone density, we look at, we look at men or women compared to young men or women. We yeah. don't look at people like I'm 61. I don't look at other 61-year-olds to see if I'm normal. Mm -hmm. I would be way over normal because I'm You'd be abnormal because, by definition. because I have, yeah, I have the bones of a 29 year old. So that's good. And that should be considered good. It shouldn't be considered high. What they do is they say, oh, you're too high if you're in the normal range. So you have to talk to your doctor and you have to know that 400 total and 129 free is how is, and they're in different they're in picograms per milliliter and uh, nanograms, nanograms per deciliter. So they don't necessarily mean that 2% Different does labs in different countries use have, the two different measures. So well, you have to also translate that. Total is one, one measure. Mm -hmm. It could be so easy. They could use both nanograms per deciliter or picograms per mil, uh, milliliter, but they don't. So basically you're looking at a number with a different denominator and numerator, and then you're looking at a different number. So you can't say 2%. Oh, 129 is not 2% of that. Right. But 129 is what you need to be whole. In other words, the lowest number you need to have no ED, you need to have good sex drive and be without all of your symptoms. That's the lowest number. But then I'm going to add another caveat that they don't, they don't address here mm -hmm. is that everyone has a different receptor stickiness in their body stickiness for free testosterone. So not everyone is going to get the same effect from the same amount of testosterone or even the same level. So people who have had obviously had a lot of testosterone, say football players, big burly guys in their youth. Well, those guys had more testosterone than a little tiny, thin, 
guy, or they had much more more sticky receptors. My generation will remember the old Charles Atlas commercials. Right, you right. Know, the, the skinny guy on the beach getting sand kicked on him by the big bully, and then he mm-hmm. does all the weightlifting. So, it, it's that sort of thing. When you're young, you have those Charles Atlas responses. When you're right. older, you don't. Right, and as we and not only we're born with different receptor responses, but then as we get older, we don't respond as well to testosterone. So oftentimes sure. we have to use more. The, the receptor is like the the blood flow is a river running by, and it has these little things floating in it. And the receptor is like an electromagnet; it just reaches out and grabs them. And so the receptor site attaches the free testosterone so that it will come in and do to a its cell. Work. To a cell to to make it turn on. Yeah. So whatever that cell does, whether it grows facial hair or if it grows head hair or if it, I mean, it has a special, it has a special activity, whatever it does, then that testosterone turns it on, but it has to be accepted by the receptor. So they don't address that particularly. So when we're talking about free testosterone numbers and total, which really don't matter, but we're saying total because the rest of the world looks at that. So you have to consider that when you go to your doctor and you're saying, I have all these symptoms. What are my numbers? Right. So, so that's, that's one thing. But the fact is, is that if you've been told that you're at high risk for heart disease, if you're at high risk for stroke, if you're at high risk for diabetes because of your family history or because of you've gained 50 pounds male, or if you have, um, Hypertension, high blood high pressure, and high high cholesterol. Then you need to look to the one thing that could protect you and actually change all or some of those parameters right. to normal. And that is testosterone. It's the only thing we've got. Well, that and self discipline. I mean, you still have, have to, to do behavioral and eat things properly and do behavioral things. But the chemical things in your body, that, that's sort of the control switch. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have enough testosterone, it won't flip the switch. That's right. So, that's right. So a lot of men come in and say, you know, I don't really feel good. But what really bothers me is I'm exercising just as much and I still have this big yeah, yeah. belly and I can't get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And so I know their testosterone level, their free testosterone level. And this article... Uh, states that or proves that low testosterone causes obesity. Well, and this article and also confirms a makes lot of, a calorie more than a calorie. <laughs> absolutely, and, and it, it confirms what we've been saying again for the last couple of years is that, uh, and we did a, a podcast on this a few weeks ago. If you want to go back and check it, uh, one of the predictors of cardiovascular events and strokes mm-hmm. by uh, four to seven years is. Erectile dysfunction. So ED. So Mm -hmm. you're not as likely to have ED if you have an adequate amount of testosterone. So I mean, it's not an absolute guarantee, but it's a significant contributor. So if your testosterone levels drop, then you're going to start having problems having an erection. Uh, You're going to have trouble maintaining an erection, having an orgasm. So if that starts to happen to you, don't, as we said in our other podcast, don't just go and get a pill for that. Because have it checked out because it is an absolute predictor of potential heart disease, heart disease which leads to death for a lot of guys and early death right. from heart attack that you can avoid. And testosterone has, has been shown in many of my patients who take it for years when they get, when they get a heart scan mm-hmm. and look for plaque in their blood vessels, even with high cholesterol or semi-high cholesterol, they have clear vessels mm-hmm. just like I did. Right. So... That's something that protects you. And when I went to my cardiologist, he goes, well, of course you had that because you've been taking testosterone since you were 20, 47. And, and I just looked at him like, I'm glad you embraced that because I hadn't realized he embraced that, right. that fact. Mm-hmm. But it's very important that doctors understand that. And I'm printing, I'm printing out a whole bunch of these articles. Not they're just understand it, they're but very, it. They tend to reject it out of hand. I know. Well, because that's not what we learned in school 42 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, medicine yeah. has changed. In medicine has years. changed in, a, in 42 years. Yeah. And some of the things we learned in school still may, still remain, but not that many. I mean, we were doing flat plates of the abdomen instead of CT scans and MRIs. I mean, it was a different world. It was a different world. And, and, and it's still a different world because in America, the, the leading voice in this area is Abraham Morgenthaler, who teaches at Harvard and has written a book about testosterone for men. And he has written about his struggles to get the uh, American medical system to accept that low testosterone 
is a predictor for prostate cancer. Right. And high testosterone is not. Uh, and that increasing your level of testosterone does not increase your risk of getting uh, prostate cancer. The European studies are confirming in Europe what Morgan Thaler has said. As a matter of fact, one of the European studies is quoted in the Swiss Medical Journal. They did a study of 83,010 veterans, male veterans, mm -hmm. and they said that the uh, there was a significant statistical reduction in all causes of death for men who all had causes. all causes and men who had testosterone replaced. So the interesting part about that is we're always looking for cost savings. Cost savings. Yeah. Now, I mean, as a as a as a country, we're looking for cost savings, just like every other country who invests in people and healthcare. Yet, by rejecting testosterone, they are making medicine cost so much more. We take three drugs or four drugs instead of one. And uh, we, when we were talking about this yesterday, it was amazing. When they just talked about diabetes, they, there are 2.4 million men who will develop type 2 diabetes next year and cardiovascular disease within the next 20 years from low testosterone. They estimate an inflation-adjusted cost between 190 and 525, wait for it, billion, billion. dollars. That's an all-cost measure. That's hospitalization, it's drug treatment, it's doctor visits, it's uh, pain medicines. It's all of the costs that you spend if you have diabetes, if you have cardiovascular problems, if you have obesity problems, if you have erectile dysfunction problems that you can potentially avoid with good self-discipline, good diet and exercise, and replacing your testosterone. Testosterone makes those other things easier. Easier to do. Because, easier to because the fact is, when I look at my practice, and if I were, I have a few men who don't want to take testosterone pellets right away. They want to see how they can do on, on the other things I give them, like exercise, diet, uh, sometimes I have to give them metformin because they're pre-diabetic. So I, I give them those things and then I see them back and they're not better. Well, but there's a challenge. <laughs> there's an inherent challenge in that. You know, if you, I mean, lots of studies have been done about going on diets. If you go on a diet to lose weight, you'll lose weight. You go off the diet, you put the weight back on. Mm -hmm. You have to go on a diet to change the lifestyle. You right, have to but it makes it easier. The concept of eating differently for the rest of your life. But it makes the it easier with testosterone. It makes it easier because it allows you to see progress. Right. You and see it muscle. It changes what happens metabolically in your body. So if you take metformin and you do the diet or exercise, or, or if you take Victoza or some of the other drugs now that are coming on the market, mm -hmm. for, for diabetic kind of drugs. It's it's a team effort, and it helps you improve beyond your own willpower, beyond your own self. But I find that even if you do that, mm -hmm. some people are some men are very compulsive, and they're very interested in maintaining their muscle mass and their weight. They can't maintain muscle mass, and that's the key to weight loss in men, especially because muscle mass burns calories while you sleep. Okay, so if you, as you're taking testosterone and as you're living your life, you're going to build more muscle mass back, whereas if you don't take it, muscle mass is, is dropping like a rock after 55. So that's why when we look at old people, which we're not, we see frail people, people who have lost their muscle mass, who are, who are having trouble walking, who are leaning over. That's a lack of muscle mass. Now, testosterone is the only way to get there. That's the only way to get your, your muscle mass back. So when you get that, you also lose fat because not only does it make you insulin sensitive, so you're sensitive to your own insulin, which helps you burn calories, but it also makes muscle that burns calories 24-7. If you wake up in the morning and you're cold, you don't have enough muscle mass or your thyroid's off, but basically you usually don't have enough muscle mass to keep you warm. The minute after nine months of taking testosterone, I knew I was going to really start losing weight at that or fat at that point by just by doing small things because I woke up warm. That meant I was burning calories all night long. It's not bad to be warm unless it's a hot flash at night. Yeah. So, so you're sleeping, burning calories. To me, that's a great diet. And so that means you can eat more normally. It's a lazy man's diet. Yeah, well, it is, but it doesn't mean you don't go work out and you don't do other things to maintain your muscles. But testosterone gives you a big leg up, and you're never going to be able to get it back without testosterone. Mm -hmm. Newsflash, you can go to the gym all you want. If you don't have testosterone, it ain't coming back.
So that makes it harder to lose weight. And, and another thing to get your head around is system differences. In the United States, the way the FDA and, and the medical system approaches considering a medical treatment is they say, let's prove there are no adverse outcomes. There are no adverse side effects before we really embrace this. So we're waiting on data from somewhere to finally overcome the iceberg and flip it. Uh, in Europe, they say, oh my gosh, this is helpful. Let's do it. And if mm -hmm. it develops adverse problems, we'll solve those. But in the meantime, all these millions of people benefit from the treatment that's available that helps them. That's right. And, and the two mentalities are diametrically opposed. So what we are trying to encourage the American medical system to embrace is the concept that replacing testosterone in men and women reduces so many pre-existing issues and costs. And if there are later identified some problems, then we can try to address those problems. That is not the way that doctors want to go. That's not the way they're trained to go in America. Mm -hmm. But elsewhere... It's absolutely the way. Doctors wait till there's a guideline that's put out by their college, which is right. the, the head honchos of their specialty, who then send them down uh, the tablets that say, you may do this, you may not do this. Basically, if you're outside those guidelines, then they find you to be not a good doctor. Or, but I find those guidelines to be like 15 years in the rears. And they can't the keep change. up. Yeah. And when they're looking at testosterone, even the endocrine, endocrinologists don't generally give testosterone to men or women. Usually that's not their job. There are a right. few that do, but that's, they usually leave that up to urologists and gynecologists. Mm -hmm. So, so when they come out with a statement saying that testosterone is not useful, this is the American Endocrine Society, all their articles that I read in there say that one article will say testosterone prevents heart disease. Another says it prevents osteoporosis. Testosterone prevents. They have all these articles, but they're saying the opposite of what all those articles say. They are. And, 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 and I don't get that. Who's, who's running them? Who, I mean, well, it's who's just like giving the them? The standard of care still is before you start a regimen of testosterone replacement, male, you have to have a prostate exam. Mm -hmm. And because of the old fear that giving you more testosterone would increase the likelihood that you develop prostate cancer, that has now been disproved. And so whether that still should be the standard of care needs to be the question that's asked. That's right. It but, shouldn't be, and that's what Morgan Taylor says. To changing their definitions and their standards. The, the article that we've been reading uh, in the Swiss Medical Journal, it says uh, fewer strokes, fewer heart attacks, fewer all-cause deaths occur among men who replace their testosterone. So the question that we ask One at the thing. end of the day, why are American men and American doctors not informed of this? It's, it's a sin, really. And it's a shame. It's a shame, and I would love to have people who are listening, mm -hmm. write their congressman, write the FDA, write, write the P or email the people who can make a difference or even your doctor. And we'll attach this article so that your doctor can read it because you may not, the article I had to, we had to translate this article. There's a lot of medical terms in here, like hypogonadism and things. Well, that, it's written to doctors. It's two doctors. Yeah. So we translate for you, but it still says the same thing. We'll post it on the BioBalance Health website. And along then with all the other research articles that are posted. You can copy it off and send it to your doctor and say, why am I not getting this? Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.